Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of the Films of Podcasts. This is the podcast for those who are big, big film buffs. I'm Brian Suffield, and I'll be your host for this show. Oh, wait. No. You guys wouldn't want to listen to this guy for two hours talk about an actor, actress, or director's entire filmography by himself, right? Well, good, because I am joined by my lovely co-host, Miss Amanda Dunn. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Brian. <laughs> I'm glad you could join me. Yeah, this is going to be very exciting. So, today for our first episode, we're going over the films of the one and only Leonardo DiCaprio, or Leo DiCap, or Leo, or whatever you want to call him. So, let's get okay. into it. <laughs> so, let's get into it. Okay, Leonardo DiCaprio. Before we get into the actual films, let's give our thoughts on the actor himself. I think he's a fantastic actor. He's one of the best actors working today. Uh, he's been in so many great movies. He's worked with so many great directors. He's a great actor. He's a wonderful actor who still has yet to win his Oscar. I, I mean, what else can you say about him? He's a great, great actor. Amanda, how do you feel about him, like, overall? Oh, I feel um, that... Leonardo DiCaprio is currently my absolute favorite working actor. So I have nothing but great things to say about him. I could, I mean, I could take all night just in this section. That question could take me all night to answer. Let's just say I love him <laughs> because I do. Who doesn't love him? I mean, if I was a woman, that would be the person I would be with. And you guys not just hear me say <laughs> that. Wow, what a great start. <clears throat> I think we all heard you, Brian. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, okay, so let's get into his filmography. Okay, there are two films he did where he had small roles, Critters 3 and Poison Ivy, but we're not really going to talk about those films. We're only going to talk about his big films. The first big film he did was This Boy's Life, which he co-starred Robert De Niro and Ellen Barkin. I haven't seen this movie, actually. Um... My dad thinks this movie's fantastic. Um, so I really hope to watch this movie when I can. Have you seen this movie, Amanda? I absolutely have. I've seen it multiple times, and it's actually one of the films that I recommend to people when having DiCaprio discussions because there are quite a few people that have not seen it or heard of it. Um, at least you have you have heard of it. I saw this film when I was, I, don't, I was still in high school at the time, that was a few years ago, and I actually saw it on HBO one night and fell in love with it. I think that it is one of his more underrated performances for right now, because a lot of people, like I said, don't really speak of that film that much, but he and De Niro are both amazing in this and what makes it so great is that DiCaprio was completely unknown at the time and he is sharing the screen almost 90% of the time with Robert De Niro who at the time everyone had heard of and he steals the show which is you know kind of a that's a big task when you're up against Robert De Niro of course De Niro is still on that level of amazing but you know DiCaprio comes in and just kind of gives him a run for his money in this film. It's an amazing pairing, amazing performances. It is a wonderful story. It's based on a true story. I love This Boy's Life. It's actually one of my favorite ones to watch with Leo. Yeah, I definitely hope to watch it one day because um, De Niro, I mean, working with DiCaprio, that must be amazing, at, especially at that time because De Niro was on his A game at that time. That was before he did a bunch of like crappy movies and stuff. But I'm looking forward right. to watching it. When I can. The next film is What's Ian Gilbert Grape, co starring him and Johnny Depp, earning him his first Academy Award nomination at age 19. He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. This movie's fantastic. DiCaprio is amazing in this movie. He plays Johnny Depp's mentally disabled brother. I mean, when you see DiCaprio playing a mentally disabled character, I mean, you're just like, oh my god, this guy can seriously act. And he was 19 years old at the time. So I did my research, guys. So that's how I know he was 19. Um, but I highly recommend this movie. I mean, co-starring with him and Johnny Depp, like Johnny Depp at that time, like I said with De Niro, he was on his A game at that time. So, I mean, who wouldn't want to work with Johnny Depp at that time? 
I think the movie's fantastic. If you guys have not seen it, please watch it. Amanda, your thoughts on Gilbert Grape? Um, definitely in my top three DiCaprio films and one of my favorite films ever. I actually saw it when I was 12 years old, and that is when I started saying that DiCaprio was my favorite actor. I actually thought at the time when I watched it, because I had not seen him before, Actually, I had in Growing Pains, but I didn't realize it was the same person. Um, I didn't realize that he, I thought that he was really mentally challenged. So when I watched the film, I was so convinced of his performance that I thought it was a mentally challenged actor. And that is when I thought to myself, okay, this is my favorite actor because he's amazing. And then later I saw Basketball Diaries and was told it was the same person. And I'm like, what? And yeah, the rest is history. What's Eating Gilbert Grape is the reason why DiCaprio became my favorite actor. Yeah, I agree. uh, DiCaprio, I mean, that wasn't my first DiCaprio movie, but when I got older, I watched that movie, and I just, I I was blown away by his performance. Next film is the film you just brought up, Basketball Diaries, came out in 1995, based on true story of Jim Carroll, um, drug ag, teenager, basketball star... Great movie, excellent performance by him. This was right before he rose up in his stardom. Uh, this is a great performance. I mean, I don't love the movie, but I still think the movie's really, really good. It wouldn't. It's not a movie I could rewatch over and over again. But DiCaprio was amazing in this movie. Uh, yeah, I feel like Basketball Diaries is one of the films that you watch for the performances. Um, it's definitely still a, a well-executed film. The story and, you know, everything about it really is, is um, it's good. But the performances are amazing, especially DiCaprio in this. I also like Mark Wahlberg in this as well. But Leo is obviously... Obviously, the reason why this film is so um, successful in the sense of just like when you see it, the thing that you walk away remembering is his performance. Um, it's very intense, very hard to watch, kind of disturbing, and again, he's amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, it, like with seeing him in Gilbert Grape, then seeing him in Basketball Diaries playing different people, like it's just. It's crazy, like, you've seen how much this guy is involved as an actor. It's incredible. Next movie is a film called Total Eclipse. I've never seen this movie ever, and I never heard of it until the other day when I was doing research. It's, like, a British (laughs) movie. I have no idea what this is. Um, Have you seen this movie, Total Eclipse? I have have not seen it. I've definitely heard of it. Uh, I remember reading about this film years and years and years ago um i think he's playing i think he's playing a homosexual character in the film but i can't remember what all it's about um i remember seeing screenshots from it i remember what his hair looks like but that's about it that's all i can say about this one his hair that's that's hilarious uh next film romeo and juliet uh, a modern day version of the classic Shakespeare story with him and Claire Danes um, came out in 1996 directed by Boz Lorman who we will be talking about again later on in this episode um, I don't I don't hate this movie but I don't love it either DiCaprio was fine in the movie but he wasn't like incredible in the movie I don't know I just don't care for modern Shakespeare films that much and not that it's a bad movie it's a fine movie it's just it's not something that I love but unfortunately a lot of people my age have only seen him in this and the film we will be talking about next or maybe later on I'm not entirely sure but I like the movie I don't love it but if you're a DiCaprio fan you probably have already seen it this is where I chime in and say that I we're probably going to be complete opposites on this one specifically. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite movies ever. <laughs> and um, for me, it's one of the definitive DiCaprio films. Like, this was my life in middle school, okay? I watched this movie probably more than anything else. 
it's it's competing with Clueless right now and a couple of other things, but Romeo and Juliet was a huge part of my adolescence, and I was obsessed with it, like, on a crazy level, okay? I, yeah, I still, to this day, am a huge fan of this film. I just love the style of it. Um, at the time... When I first watched it, I felt like it was probably going to be this for me, like, later on in life. Like, I, it was like I pretty much, did, I married that film at the time. It was like, it's you and me, Romeo and Juliet, for life. So, this film is really special to me, and I just love the soundtrack as well. Like, the soundtrack was also um, an, an obsession for me. It's an amazing soundtrack. I don't know if you've really listened to it. I've Before, listened to some songs. Like, it's a good a soundtrack. Thing, but it's also an amazing soundtrack. Um, I thought that the two leads were brilliant in it. I love what he brought to the character. I've read some things that he talked about when he was making the film, and he was really excited about this role. So I know it was like kind of special to him, too. And him and Claire became really close friends at the time when they were making this. And I'm a huge Baz Luhrmann fan. I mean, I could go on and on. I, yeah, I love Romeo and Juliet a lot. I mean, like I said, I don't hate the movie, but if you love it, I totally, totally understand it. I mean, like, I didn't watch it until I was, like, a freshman in high school because that's when I read Romeo and Juliet. I'm a junior right now, so that's when I read Romeo and Juliet when I was a freshman. And I, and I guess because I loved the story so much, I thought we were going to watch the original one from the 60s, but instead we watched this one. So, I mean... If you love it, you love it. If you hate it, you hate it. I'm not one of those haters. I'm one of those people who just likes the movie. Next film, Marvin's Room with him, Meryl Streep, and Diane Keaton, and Robert De Niro. <laughs> um, I came out in 1996, same year as Romeo and Juliet. This is the film that comes out before the film that basically made him a star. Um, I haven't seen this movie. I hear this movie's great. Um... I don't know what it's about, and I, I kind of don't want to know what it's about. So, I mean, have you seen this movie, Marvin's Room? I have. I've seen it a few times. Um, of course, this coming out the same year as Romeo and Juliet. I, I pretty much watched everything, anything and everything I could get my hands on um, with Leo. And I've seen it a few times since then. Uh, I, think it's, I think it is a really good film. I think that... Most film lovers would probably appreciate it just for like, I mean, this is kind of a sort of, I guess it's not too complicated of a story, but it's pretty touching. Um, performances are obviously great when you have people like Meryl Streep and um, Diane Keaton and Leonardo DiCaprio. And um, I thought it was pretty touching. I liked the way it ended. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one. Yeah, I hope to check it out as soon as I can. The street thing, uh, that comes from another type of movie lover thing. It's too long. I can, I, I'll tell you about it later. It's it's a very long story. <laughs> um, next film. Okay, yeah, I didn't get it, but I figured I was like, oh. Next film. <clears throat> Don't judge me on my saying, near, far, wherever you are. Titanic is our next movie. Do <laughs> you want me to try and sing it a little better than that? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't want to do that. Go ahead. Titanic is our next movie. Came out in 1997. Directed by James Cameron. Nominated for 14 Academy Awards. Winner of 11, including Best Picture and Director. One Oscar it was not nominated for was Best Actor for Leonardo DiCaprio. He plays Jack Dawson. And look, let's be real. This was the first DiCaprio movie I ever watched. I watched this movie probably, I think, a week before Inception came out in the theater. Um... You know, people give this movie a lot of hate because it made a billion bucks and, um, you know, it's a people think it's just a romance movie. Let's be real, guys. This isn't just a romance movie. Yes, for the first hour and a half, it's a romance movie with lines saying, <laughs> I'm involved right now. <laughs> like, come on, man. Seriously, like, chill, okay? Like, chill, okay? You just met this girl, like, two days ago. Like, chill. Um, and then, of course, in the later half, it's just, like, chaotic because that's when the ship sinks and it's a 
brilliant movie in the later half of the movie. Um, you know, I gotta be honest, I love Titanic. I think Titanic's a great movie. Do I think it's, like, the best movie of all time? Of course not. But I thought DiCaprio and Kate Winslet worked incredibly together. I thought those two were fantastic together. And I thought DiCaprio did a really good job. Do I think he deserved an Oscar nomination? Look, if, if Kate Winslet got nominated, then Leonardo DiCaprio deserved a nomination. But, um... I think that his performance as Jack was pretty good. Not, like, amazing, but really, really good. Amanda, give your thoughts on Titanic. Um, Titanic, I think is... It's still, I still think it's a great film, while I don't... I probably don't love it as much as I did initially. Um, I think I was very... I fell under the Titanic spell, like a lot of people did. But I will tell you, I still really do enjoy watching it. I saw it so many times initially. I saw it in the theater when it came out, and I cried into my popcorn. <laughs> like, just so many tears. Um, I still think it's a pretty devastating film. You know, the whole love story aspect is usually what people like to hate on. They had to make a film about the ship, and obviously... You know, they probably could have found maybe a true story somewhere involved of someone who was on the ship somewhere. But they, they had to come up with something. And what's the easiest thing? What's going to really get people involved and invested? And by the time the ship sinks, like, why are you going to be so devastated? This love story, like, these two people being torn apart by this tragedy, right? I think that it was really smart to write the film as a romance. Um, and... I, like, if I don't watch it for a while and then I go back and revisit it, it's one of those movies that I kind of appreciate more if I take some time in between viewings, which I did for years, and then I went back to see it in 3D when it came out in the theater. Same here. And I fell for the Titanic spell again. So um, while it's not, like, one of my absolute favorite films ever made, I still really enjoy watching it. So there. <laughs> Yeah, when it came out in 3D, I, I saw it, like, twice or maybe maybe more. I don't even remember, honestly, because I loved it. It was so cool seeing it in IMAX. It was, like, the greatest 3D experience I've ever had at that time. That was before Gravity came out. So, like, uh, yeah, I don't get the hate. I don't like the fact that people hate on the movie simply because of the romance. People need to watch the movie. And here, let me just say this right now. Unfortunately, because... People my age have no taste in movies. Not all of you guys. You, Some of you guys are good people. Some of you are not. Um, anyway, um, there are more films from DiCaprio's filmography that you guys have to watch other than Titanic. Like I said, I love Titanic, but there are other films other than Titanic that you need to watch because Titanic isn't the only thing DiCaprio was in. Yes, it made him a star, but... That's not, like, the only film worth watching by him. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's all I had to say about Titanic. Next movie, The Man in the Iron Mask. Yuck. Um, He plays two people in this movie. He plays Louis, King Louis the Knife and Felipe. Uh, I do not like this movie. I do not like this movie. It came out right after Titanic, and people were probably excited for this movie when it came out. Um, I watched it about, like, two years ago, and I I didn't know anything about it. All I heard was that the character was in, so I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. Then I saw that he played two characters, and I'm like, that's really cool. But the movie was so dumb, and so mediocre, and so ridiculous. Like, I, I this might be my least favorite DiCaprio film. Um, yeah, I don't like this movie, like, at all. How do you feel about this movie? This is actually one of the few that I have not sat down to watch. Uh -huh. I remember the trailers. I definitely read about it and saw his pictures. I know his ridiculous long hair is involved. But I don't... I, I can't say anything else about it. Okay. So I will just um, keep that in mind that you hate it, and maybe one day I'll watch it and I'll let you know if I agree with that. Okay. Uh, next movie... Oh, wait a minute. This, this is my least favorite DiCaprio movie, the film we're about to talk about. The Beach. The Beach. <laughs> the mother fucking Beach. <laughs> okay. This film came out in 2000. It was directed by a Academy Award winning director, Danny Boyle. He didn't win an Oscar at that time. He won an Oscar 
like about eight years later for Slumdog Millionaire, which is a film you guys have to watch. Um, this film is so over the top and so melodramatic. He screams a lot. It's so dumb. It makes no sense. It's just a bunch of like glares and like pretty boy stuff. I don't know what Danny Boyle was thinking at the time because now he's one of the best directors working today. He's currently working on the Steve Jobs biopic with Michael Fassbender. So, I mean, like, what what was he thinking when making this movie? I mean, ah, oh, I hate this movie so much. Oh, my God. the Cap I can't blame DiCaprio, but he was... Ah, he was, he was bad, unfortunately, and that's a shame because DiCaprio's a great actor. So I mean, I, I, I don't like the movie. How do you feel about this movie? It's not one of my favorites. I don't feel as strongly, and I don't hate it like you do. Um, I think I've seen it more than once, which is interesting. And you know, just to comment on Danny Boyle, like we can probably reach into a few of the great directors filmographies and find something that we're not too like keen on you know what i'm saying true. i can say something like that about martin scorsese and that's like that's true that's yeah that's difficult to do but i don't think it's as absolutely terrible as you do i i get your points about the screaming and the dramatic aspects i actually couldn't stand what's your name oh my gosh she's in this film what's her name um She's from Snowpiercer and Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, what's her, what's her uh, Tilda Swinton? Yeah, yes. I hated her in this film. Not that she wasn't good, because she always is, but she's one of those actresses that makes me so angry with some of the characters that she portrays, and she does it so well. I just remember the, like, that's one of the first things I think of when I think of the beach. Like, I uh. could not stand her character. She drove me nuts. Um... But, I mean, yeah, we don't really have to talk about this one that much more. I don't hate it. I don't love it, that's for sure. But, I mean, like, if it came on TV right now, I'd probably watch it just to, like, see, like, once again. Like, how do I feel about this one? Like, how is it exactly I feel about it? I remember the shark story. He told the shark story in the film, and it was like he was making it up. And yeah. He was, like, pretending. But that was a pretty, I thought that was a fun moment. Okay. Yeah, that Continue was probably, that was probably my film. favorite moment in the movie. Uh, next film. Gangs in New York, the first film that he did with legendary Martin Scorsese, uh, came out in 2000 around Oscar time. He played Amsterdam Fallon. Uh, I, I've i seen every film that he did with Scorsese. This is a good movie, just not a great movie. DiCaprio's great in the movie, but he's overpowered by the incredible performance from Daniel Day-Lewis. Um, this is probably my least favorite DiCaprio Scorsese movie. I think it's a little overrated. But I think it's a very good movie. Uh, DiCaprio's great going back and forth with Daniel Day-Lewis. I mean, he keeps going back and forth with all these fantastic actors. I mean, it's insane. And later on, he goes back and forth with more of these fantastic actors. I mean, the guy's gone back and forth with literally like every incredible actor ever. And there's so many other actors that he needs to work with in the future. How do you feel about Gangs in New York? I remember the trailer for this film and I was in the theater to see I don't remember what I was seeing but I remember the trailer came up I had not heard anything about it or read anything about it so it was a complete surprise to me when the trailer started playing and I got so excited I remember the camera panned up from his feet up to his face and I realized it was Leo and I'm like whoa and this was one of those moments in his career sort of a transition for him like Remember, he had put on a little weight. He just looked a little older. He had some facial hair. And, I mean, at this point, like like I said, he was already my favorite actor. And I just been sort of waiting for his career to evolve. I remember he had taken a break for a minute. And I just, like, started freaking out in the theater. Like, oh, my God, it's Leo, my man. And so <laughs> I remember my brother and I sat there, like, for the first 10 minutes of whatever we had came to see, just talking about the trailer for Gangs of New York and how we were so excited to see it. Um, but that being said, I, when I saw the film, um, I wasn't disappointed at all. I still really, really like it. Um, it would be probably, if I had to rank my, my favorites with um, DiCaprio and Scorsese collaborating, it would be this one as my least favorite. But that's, that's just still like me saying that... 
strawberries are my least favorite out of my top five fruits. I don't know. <laughs> um, and I still love them. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I really, I really do still love this, but I would agree with you. Daniel Day Lewis is probably the, um, he's probably the one in the film to watch when it comes to like who we're going to brag about most performance wise. Um, I thought that DiCaprio's accent fell off here and there. It wasn't completely consistent. Um, but his his emotions are there. They're intact. His his performance is still great. I just felt a little critical of um, his accent in this one. And uh, yeah, but it's still again. I love the the score, and I thought that um, it was for the first out of the box for DiCaprio and Scorsese. It's still a pretty um, pretty great. It's still pretty great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you on the accent. I thought his accent was a little. Ugh. But um, next one came out four days after Gangs of New York, and that is Catch Me If You Can, directed by Steven Spielberg. It's him playing Frank Abagnale Jr., a young con artist who pretends to be a pilot, doctor, and lawyer. This is my favorite DiCaprio film. I have watched this movie so many times ever since I first saw it. Ever since I became a film lover, I have watched this movie over like 30 times. I could watch this movie over and over and over again. It's not my favorite DiCaprio performance, but it's up there with like my top five favorite DiCaprio performances. I I mean, I could talk about this movie all day. And um, I mean, he's he's fantastic in the movie. He's great. I mean, when he plays a 16-year-old, he looks 16. That's the thing that really shocks me because when he made this movie, he was 27. And he looked 16. They really nailed that because he still had that young boy aspect to him. So I guess that worked very well. Um, I thought he should have been nominated for this movie personally. Well, like, Tom Hanks was great. And Christopher Walken was great, who was nominated for the film. Um, I thought DiCaprio should have been nominated for Best Actor. But it would have been weird because he would have been nominated against his Games of New York co-star, Daniel Day-Lewis. So, I mean... It was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I love this movie. I could talk about it all day. How do you feel about this movie? Oh, it's so great. Um, between the two films that year, Gangs of New York and Catch Me If You Can, I would choose Catch Me If You Can over um, Gangs of New York just because I thought it was, I think it's pretty perfect, really. Just, you know, the storyline, the performances, the, I love the editing, I love the pacing. Um, Spielberg's direction here is awesome, and I felt that um, DiCaprio, in this film specifically, his age range is crazy. Like how you mentioned how he looked, he was able to pull off the the young teen look and still portray someone in their twenties, and he's um, he's always had that going for him, and it's. This is one of the films where it's the most apparent to me that he can just, he's so versatile with his look. And uh, I really thought that there were some really good emotional moments in this one. I, I remember this movie got me like laughing, it got me tearing up. Uh, just a really great film. And I actually mentioned it the other day because I haven't seen it in a while. And I was like, I want to watch Catch Me If You Can. It's been a while since I saw that one. Yeah, I, I love this one. Yeah, I love this one too. Yeah, it's that's the thing that I love about it. Like, it can make you laugh. It can make you cry. Like, honestly, the first time you watch it, you just think of it, think of it as a drama. But the more you watch it, the more you laugh at it because you get more of the comedy. I mean, like, it's just it's a perfect movie. I mean, to me, I it might be my favorite Spielberg movie. I have no idea, but like, I I love the movie so much. I've seen it so many. It's like my fifth favorite movie of all time. Like, it's that great. Next film, <laughs> next film, The Aviator, where he played Howard Hughes. He got a, he got his first Oscar nomination in 11 years for Best Actor. He lost that Oscar to his Django Unchained co-star, Jamie Foxx. Um, uh, this movie's fantastic. I mean, um, again, working with Scorsese, this is a brilliant movie. I've watched this movie a lot as well. It's been on a lot over the last few months. And whenever it's on, I put it on. I mean, I love the scene where he's just sitting in his, like, projection room. And he's, like, all, like, he has that beard. He has no clothes on. He has those all those cups of milk filled with pee. Like, and then he's, like, come in with the milk. 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 Like, it's a, oh, he's so good in this movie. And, yeah, at first... His, like, 
accent like ah, like like it really that was a terrible Howard Hughes impression by the way. Um, his accent annoyed me ju at first, just like within the first five minutes. But then as the movie progressed, I fell in love with his performance. He won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in the Drama. I, I think this is a fantastic film, fantastic performance, great movie. How do you feel about this movie? I think this is one of Leo's best performances ever. Um, I think that this film is amazing. I, yeah, I'm trying to figure out where to break. I know which ones are some of my favorites, like, for sure, but I don't, it's really hard for me to do, to rank them. Um, this is one of my favorites, performance-wise, absolutely. He is incredible in this film. And, I mean, I already knew up, like, up until this film was made that he was incredible and had been. And I mean, like I'd seen him in what's he to Gilbert Grape, which is still to me, one of the best performances by anyone ever. So, I mean, obviously DiCaprio had solidified the fact that he's an amazing actor, but there was just something about his performance in the aviator that just like, again, like, I don't know how you do it, but I'm sitting here blown away again. And that's, I mean, that's why I love him so much. I just think he's one of the actors working right now that can, he can just, like, be so convincing with these, like, he's always, have you noticed DiCaprio has has made so many films where he has to be so intense and, like, emotional and just, like, pulling out these gut-wrenching, heartbreaking, like, crazy performances, and to me, he's, like, he's a master at that. I mean, it's, it's really exhausting. As an actress, I can say it's really exhausting to portray characters like this. And he just pull, like pulls them out. Performance after performance, a character after character. He's drawn to these types of characters. And oh, the aviator. I mean, there's that scene when the plane crashes. Oh, I love that scene. Like, and I, I just remember that moment when the plane crashes and he gets out of the plane and he's trying to walk... I was like, I was tearing up, not necessarily because I was emotional from what was happening, but just watching how amazing this actor is. Like, I was tearing up because he is so good and he's so inspiring. And I remember the film went off and my brother looked at me and said, he is the best actor I've ever seen. <laughs> so the aviator made my brother say that. That was, yeah, that's how I feel about that one. Sorry. I it's got okay. a little excited. It's okay. Like, I mean, every time I watch that movie, honestly, I mean, I loved Jamie Foxx and Ray, but I, I think DiCaprio deserved the Oscar for this movie, personally. I mean, when you do a performance like Jamie Foxx and Ray, oh, it's, ha it's hard to top that performance. But if Ray didn't come out that year, I think DiCaprio would have won that Oscar for Ray. I, I, think I mean, not Ray, well. The Aviator, excuse me. Yeah, I think he would have as well, and I, I think that he should have. Um, I mean, I saw Ray, and the, I mean, great job, but I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just feel like DiCaprio was on another level, but that's how I often feel. We can move on now. Okay, next film, The Departed. The Departed, excuse me. I, <laughs> I tried to do a Boston accent there. The third film... Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio collaborated on, came out in 2006, won the Oscar for Best Picture. Scorsese finally won his first Oscar for Best Director. This movie is awesome. This is an awesome movie. This is a, this is a very long movie, running at 2 hours and 45 minutes. Long as hell. But the movie is so engaging from beginning to end. And some people have said, that this is the film where people finally saw DiCaprio as a man because even in the um the Aviator he was still he still had that boyish feeling to him but in this movie he was a man from begin to end like he just he knocked it out of the park working alongside great actors like Jack Nicholson, Alec Baldwin, Martin Sheen, Mark Wahlberg, Matt Damon. I mean he's worked with so many. I mean oh my god this movie's amazing. This is probably my favorite. DiCaprio film not my favorite performance but my favorite film he was amazing in this movie just oh my god the shit that he went through in this movie when he meets Jack Nicholson's Frank Costello and he slams his hand and then he gives him the money for that oh my god it's brilliant I love The Departed I could talk about it forever 
Yes, absolutely. I am with you 100% on that one. The Departed is one of my favorite films by anyone ever, and it just so happens to be Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio, my favorite actor currently, and my favorite director currently. I am so in love with this film. I remember that year, it was a year where he had two films that came out. I think we're going to be talking about Blood Diamond next. Um, And I was very, very disappointed that he was not nominated for The Departed instead of Blood Diamond because to me it is so clear and obvious that his performance in The Departed was the more deserving performance. And I am still, still highly confused about why the Academy chose to nominate Blood Diamond instead. I knew in that moment he was not going to win. As soon as I saw the nominations, I'm like, he's not going to win for Blood Diamond. Why wasn't this for The Departed? But anyway, that's my beef with with that. that. Let me just talk about the film. I think it's brilliant. I think I made a list back like a few years ago for top 10 films of the decade, and I had The Departed at number one. Um, I saw this film in the theater by myself because at the time I needed a babysitter and because I didn't want to take my son to see it. He was far too young to see such an R-rated film. And so I finally got my mom and dad to come and visit me where I was living and, and babysit so that I could go and watch The Departed by myself. I don't think I, I had ever seen any of the theater alone before. I remember sitting, um, there were two people on either side of me and I was so engaged I did not even notice that there were, like, I had, that people had sat down next to me until the film ended, and I remember there, there's this moment in the film, not to give any spoilers to people that haven't seen it, but there's a moment in this film, Brian, that I'm pretty sure you know what I'm referring to, it's a very shocking moment that makes everyone gasp, and it kind of upsets everybody, you know that one? Oh, absolutely, yeah. um, I felt the I same when I saw it, too. That happened. Oh, it, it hurt me so bad. And I remember I yelled in the theater. I yelled out a, a, a profanity. I yelled a profane word out. And <laughs> people started laughing at me. And it was one of those moments where I was, for the first time, taken out of the film because I was... I. I forgot where I was, like, I was so engaged, and, like, I wasn't blinking or breathing the whole film, I just think, from beginning to end, it is brilliant, and it is one of my favorite DiCaprio performances, like, if I had to choose, like, a top three, this would probably fall into that, I felt like he was, like, more of a man, like you said, you know, just in, I guess, the way he his demeanor and physically he, he seems you know a, a bit older and he finally looks it and um i love the accent and i think all the characters are amazing um it's just a great story it's a great american drama i love it i love it um <clears throat> blood diamond is our next movie um <laughs> now like like you said, he you think that he should be nominated for the Departed instead. I think that what he did in Blood Diamond, I mean, pulling off probably the hardest accent to pull off, a South African accent. I remember the first time I saw that movie, like I knew he was in it. I just didn't know what he was doing. Like I thought he was playing like an American character. So when I heard the accent, I'm like, "What the hell is he doing?" And then I looked it up, and I'm like, "A South African accent? Jesus!" Wow. I mean, like, he pulled off one of the hardest accents to pull off ever. And that's why, personally to me, I think that's kind of why he got nominated. But um, the film itself, I like it. I don't love it. I think he's incredible in the movie, as is the guy whose name I cannot pronounce, the black guy, the African-American actor, <laughs> Jimin Hunsu, who was recently in Furious 7. Please go check out Furious 7, by the way. Um, <clears throat> um... I liked the movie a lot. I think the movie was a little too long, but I think that you could watch it just for DiCaprio's performance, like just for that performance alone. What about you? What do you think? Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't I wasn't necessarily hating on Blood Diamond. I just I just felt like the the Departed was such a better film on so many levels that it I don't know. It just seemed 
sort of silly to not nominate him for The Departed. Um, the por- performances, you know, when pitted against each other, I mean, you can debate them, which one's better, for sure, just because... You know, like you said, the South African accent is very difficult. I was not sure what the accent was when I first heard the trailer, saw the trailer, and heard him speaking. So I immediately looked it up because I'm like, I can't really pinpoint what I'm hearing. Um, I looked it up, and then I heard people saying, oh, well, that's pretty accurate to what it sounds like. So I felt, because I I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Um, But I think that the film is uh, definitely worth watching. I would still recommend blood diamond for sure and i mean for performances and i mean like it's a cool it's a cool interesting story too so um not a bad film by any means i mean i would watch blood diamond anytime really i think that it's pretty exhilarating and i liked i mean i was sad at the end so i mean how many times is dicaprio gonna make me cry (laughs) A movie, it doesn't matter what it is. Almost every single time, I'm going to cry. Just wait for it. Yeah, like like you said, it's a, it's still a good movie by all means, but it's not as good as The Departed. Next movie, Body of Lies, directed by Ridley Scott, came out in 2008, starred him, Russell Crowe, and Mark Strong. Uh, before I actually talk about DiCaprio, I just want to quickly talk about Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe got fat for this movie. Like, he gained a lot of weight. Holy <laughs> shit. I mean, Jesus. Ah, wow. Um, okay, that was my little geek rant, whatever, about Russell Crowe and, um, body wise. Um, I always saw the movie once. I remember liking it or thinking that it was okay. I loved DiCaprio in the movie. He was playing a cop in the movie. He was, I think he was playing an FBI agent. And, um, I mean, working with Ridley Scott at that time was pretty awesome because he was coming off American Gangster, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, so, I mean, I like the movie. I don't love it. I, really, Scott fans, I think, are mixed on the film. DiCaprio fans are kind of mixed on the film, but they love his performance. I mean, what, when has the guy given a bad performance? Well, except for the beach, but I can't blame him for that. So, um... Yeah, I like the movie, but I wouldn't say I love it. How do you feel about the movie? If you've seen it. I actually have not seen this one. I have not seen it. I don't know. Hmm. It's not a movie. Shocking, actually. It's one of those movies that I forget was made. Like, you you bringing it up just now reminded me that I've not seen it. But it was one I remember seeing the trailer a couple of times, and then it just sort of disappeared, and I didn't remember that it was a thing. So, again, thank you for reminding me to see it at some point. No problem. Ne- uh, oh, this movie is one of the most depressing movies I've ever seen. The next movie, Revolutionary Road. Ah. Oh. It was the long away reunion between him and Kay Winslet. The film was directed by Sam Mendes, who made American Beauty, wrote The Perdition, Jarhead, mm, and he later on made Skyfall and the upcoming Spectre. Um, uh, oh, my God. Where do I begin? Oh, God. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, this is a really sad movie. Um, I- I'm only 17. This movie made me not want to get married. Um, it's a it's a suburban fifties couple. Uh, DiCaprio's great. Winslet's amazing movie. Seeing them together again was great. I remember, I remember seeing my dad watching this movie, and um, I was like, "What are you watching?" And he was like, "Tell me about this movie." And I'm like, "I don't know if I want to watch it or not." So then I watched it a few years later, and um. You know, like, seeing them, like, in Titanic, they didn't argue, but then in this movie, they just, oh my god, they kept fighting, oh my, oh god, I'm, honestly, when I saw the movie, I was speechless, I was speechless, like, I mean, when he, like, when he, honestly, when he yells, the first time I saw him yelling, I kind of laughed because he, he always closes his eyes every time he yells. It's like in The Departed when he was talking to Vera Farmiga's character in the therapy session. Like, he was squinting his eyes, 
And then he was like, just, why don't you just give me a bottle of scotch and a handgun to blow my fucking head off? So, like, I mean, and when he yells, fuck you, April, like, oh, shit, wow. Um, this is a fantastic movie, but it's a really sad movie. Do not watch this, like, with anyone. Just watch it by yourself. That's what I did. So, yeah, that's it. I want to hear your thoughts on <laughs> um, Revolutionary Road. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I love this film. And, okay. Whew. Revolutionary Road is one hard film to watch in regards to just, you know, the content. And it's very depressing and upsetting, but it's like real life stuff. And something about this film to me is like it ends and I feel everything really, like every emotion. Oh my gosh. But I'm also very inspired by this film. This was one of the films that when I saw it as an actor, I was just so like incredibly inspired and motivated by the performances that I witnessed. I think I, this for me is like one of DiCaprio's best performances. And I'm saying that, like, I feel like we've said that about so many at this point, but I really feel like this is a strong contender for me as one of his absolute best performances. And I mean, I actually had this film ranked very, very high. I think that was my favorite film from that year. And then also I made a list at one point for my favorite films of the decade. The one where I had the departed at number one, I have revolutionary road in there as well. Um, it sort of reminds me in, in the style, not necessarily like the decade that's being portrayed, but the style of it sort of reminds me of Blue Valentine in a way, which is one of my favorite films I've ever made. And it's with the sense of just the real life stuff that people deal with. And it's not always rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes it's really heavy stuff. This material is extremely heavy. But for me, it's one of the most inspiring performances from him and Kate Winslet as well, who's also one of my favorite actresses. I don't know. I just, um, I have a, nothing but good things to say about it. I recommended it to a few people when they watched it. I just remember one person came back to me and said, why did you tell me to watch that? I can't stop crying. I feel like dying. <laughs> so um, it definitely gets people. It's very effective. I do not think that it's for everyone, but for someone like me who for some reason is very much drawn to depressing real-life material, it's, um, I mean, it's a win-win in that situation. The story, the performances, and the characters are all, like, I don't know, just um, uh. very effective. That's all I can, I, mean, I just keep saying that, but it's true. Like, I feel stuff talking about it just talking about the film is making me feel stuff, so we should probably move on. Yeah, let's move on. Next film, 2010, Shutter Island. The fourth film between DiCaprio and Scorsese co-starred him, Mark Ruffalo, uh, who else was in it? Fuck. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Uh, ben Kingsley, Patricia Clarkson, Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams. Did you say yeah, Michelle Williams, Max von Sydow. Uh, this I remember this movie coming out, and I remember everybody was talking about it in school. Like I was in sixth grade when the movie came out, and that's why I was. That's why I started watching more R-rated movies, and that's why I started becoming a film buff. And um, I remember everyone was going to see this movie. Everyone was like talking about. It. Everyone was like, "Oh, are you gonna go see Shutter Island? Shutter Island? Shutter Island?" I didn't see it in the theater when it came out. I w I saw it when it was on like. HBO or Stars or wherever it was, and um, I was, I was, I was like, what the hell, what? I I I liked it the first time, but I didn't love it. So then I watched it again, and I loved it even more. I've watched it so many times since, and it's a movie that requires multiple viewings. You cannot watch this movie only once. Um, DiCaprio is fantastic in the movie. To me, it, the thing is, 
Some people call this the best performance he's ever given because he has so many different emotions in this movie. And, um, like, it's a haunting movie. Like, it's a effed up film. And, um, I think that, yeah, what DiCaprio's character goes for, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but, um, DiCaprio's character is just, ah, I, I, ah, wow. I mean, like his performance in Revolutionary Road, how do you describe it? There's no way to describe how he was in this movie. Like, it's just insane. How do you feel about this movie? It's a beautiful film. Um, I loved Shutter Island. I was, again, impressed with Martin and DiCaprio together. And I... My dog is crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, there's actually a scene in this film, specific scene, that I... I'm a fan of making lists, and there was this one point where I made a list of top ten scenes. And there's a scene from this film that I think is one of my favorites to watch. It's with him and Michelle Williams. It's one of those dream sequences. There's this moment where she's she's telling it, she's talking to him, and and do you remember the moment where she and it, they showed this in the trailer, so it's not necessarily a spoiler, but she turns to Ash in his yeah, arms. Yeah, yeah, that scene's that scene's and amazing. The, 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 pieces of that's like, my that's tell, my favorite like, scene like in the, the movie i love it that's my favorite scene in the whole movie i love that okay scene. yeah that was an amazing scene oh my gosh such a beautiful cinematic moment i've just all oh, oh i've watched i've gone to youtube and just looked that scene up and just watched it like over and over because it's so perfect um the <laughs> film as a whole i am a huge fan of i Again, it was one of those like up and down roller coaster rides where I mean it's pretty honestly it's pretty there's not really any light moments in this film ever. No, it's not pretty at all. heavy, and then it gets really dark and really heavy when you realize where it's going, and it's just you know, and you don't really know how to feel or what to think, and then they tell you that by the end of it, it's like, well, here's what's really going on, and then you still don't want to really believe that. So it's um, yeah, it's it's a crazy no pun intended, film, and also pretty beautiful. I know it's something beautiful about Shutter Island to me. I, I think it's a beautifully shot, and, like, w there's no score to the movie, too, which is amazing. Um, But, yeah, like, I mean, people consider this a horror movie because we're, after I saw the movie, I watched the trailer, and they made it look like a horror movie, and that was not a good th decision at all. Like, I mean, it's, yeah, it's an intense movie to watch, but it's not a horror movie, like, like scary or anything. It is scary, but it's not like like Friday the thirteenth scary or anything like that. So like it's more of a thriller and it's very interesting to see DiCaprio do that kind especially for Scorsese because Scorsese had not done a movie like that since Cape Fear. And that came out in like the right. early nineties. So like that's something amazing. Like it brought back like I mean DiCaprio was fantastic in the movie. Now like that was a weird movie, but the next film we're talking about is might be even weirder. Inception. Now, when this movie came out, I remember seeing the trailer for this movie, and um, at the time, this was when I started becoming more of a film buff, so like in the trailer where it said, from Christopher Nolan, the director of The Dark Knight, I'm like, The Dark Knight? Oh my god. Yes, I must go see this movie immediately, and I love the cast in this movie. I mean, DiCaprio is fantastic in the movie, but like, he works alongside Joseph Gordon-Levin, and Ellen Page, and Michael Caine, and Ken Watanabe, and Tom Hardy. Like, he works aside so many fantastic actors in this movie and i mean his performance is amazing the character of dom is just i you know i mean oh and marion coltiard he works with that wonderful actress that wonderful beauty of an actress like oh my god that woman is incredibly beautiful um what I'm not, I don't want to say anything. I mean, look, the movie did come out five years ago, but I do not want to say anything at all because there are people out there that haven't even seen the movie, so I'm not going to say what happens. But like his character in Shutter Island, he goes through a bunch of shit. He's always playing characters that go through shit. Like, literally. He never plays a redeemable character, it seems. So, like, I mean, on the top of your head, can you think of a character he plays that's redeemable? <laughs> 
that's my answer. Um, give me a second. Or not. <laughs> Redeemable. Mm. Well, I can say that uh, Inception is quite a film. Um, the cast is amazing, like you said. That's one of the best aspects of the film. Just an amazing cast. I mean, he's not the only amazing aspect of this, okay? Joseph Gordon-Levitt, that scene with the rotating hallway, was oh, that's one of my favorite parts. Um, I like that uh, Tom Hardy. I love that Tom Hardy is in this, and I didn't remember that it was him at first, because at the time, Tom Hardy wasn't Tom Hardy yet, and so, like, later on, I saw him in other things, and then I remembered he was the guy that I saw in Inception. Anyway, this is not a Tom Hardy podcast. We'll make that later. Um, it is, Inception's great. I mean, the writing, the writing is incredible. I, I can't Im- imagine writing the screenplay for this. Like, this would have taken me forever to write this. It's so intricate, so smart, just incredible, incredible writing. So, to me, the strongest aspect of Inception is the writing, the screenplay itself, and also the cast. And, obviously, DiCaprio is still on his A-game, just as usual, and uh, Christopher Nolan at this point was kind of solidifying the fact that he's about to become a legendary director, and yeah, A+. plus. Yeah, A-plus indeed, like, fantastic movie. Don't watch it only once, watch it at least twice, three times tops. Um, Yeah, Inception's a great movie, I mean, it's fantastic. Seeing it in the fear, just, oh my god, it's so effing loud like every other Christopher Nolan movie. Maybe we'll do an episode on him someday, hopefully. Um, Next film, Jay Ecker, 2011, directed by Clint Eastwood. Get off my lawn! I don't train girls! <laughs> uh, I can't think of another Clint Eastwood line on top of my head. Oh, um, go ahead, make my day. I sound like, I sound like Batman say, right now. I mean, I, I sound like Batman right now. Jesus. You um, sound like Christian Bale. <laughs> Christian, but I don't wear any hockey pants. Um, uh, Jay Edgar is a movie that re- I was so excited for Jay Edgar when it was coming out. I mean, DiCaprio, Clint Eastwood. I mean, at that time, Clint Eastwood had a film called Hereafter, which is a very... Uh, it's so boring, that movie, but great visuals and a really good performance by Matt Damon. Um... But J. Edgar had a lot of potential because it was one of those historical movies. Clint Eastwood's usually good with these historical movies, and DiCaprio's usually good with his roles. DiCaprio was fantastic in the movie as J. Edgar. He was probably the only great thing about the movie, and also the movie was very well shot, but, like, uh, DiCaprio was fantastic. The old J. Edgar, I mean, it was very weird seeing him. Unfortunately, they showed it in the trailer, which they shouldn't have. They should have shown it only in the movie. Um, When you see him in that makeup, it's weird seeing DiCaprio as an old man. Like, it's weird. Um, I, I, The film itself is not that great, in my opinion. It's just, eh, it's okay. I would give it, like, a C. It's, like, right in the middle. The film is very long. It drags. I don't like how it jumps from the past to the present. Like, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like that, personally. I wish they just did it in regular time, like, real time. But DiCaprio's amazing in the movie. Have you seen Jay Edgar? I've seen... i kind of seen it. I, I put it on to watch it, and I basically fell asleep multiple times trying to finish the film. Um, like, you talked about it drags in areas and stuff. I just remember moments I would wake up and I would see him, and I would watch him for a few minutes. I'm like, oh, he's doing so good, and then I would fall asleep. Um, <coughs> so, to me, it was one of those films, like, I was getting bored, and uh, it seemed like maybe it was disappointing um, for the potential that it had, but I can't completely judge it just because I was not able to see it from beginning to end without falling asleep. But the reason I was falling asleep is because the film was not keeping me awake. So Yeah. I mean, I almost fell asleep a few times, too, and I tried not to because I saw it in the theater, and I said to myself, I'm going to watch it one more time when it comes out like on HBO or whatever, and I did. I managed to stay up. Um, so, I mean, 
I don't, I don't, I never see myself watching it ever again, but I guess it's worth watching at least once. I mean, I guess. If you were a true Leo fan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, like, jumping at the, yeah, I'm not jumping out of my seat to see this one anytime soon, but I think, I, I feel like I saw enough of it to grasp at least, like, what to expect, and that's kind of probably why I'm not, like, so anxious to really revisit it right now. Yeah, I agree with you. Next film, The Hango Unchained. No, Django Unchained, excuse me. <laughs> um, That's how I pronounced it the first time I saw it, before he said his name was Django. Um, Django! The Hango Unchained. Funny. Um... Quentin Tarantino directed it. Oh, okay, when you first heard that DiCaprio was working with the um, when you first heard that DiCaprio and Tarantino were working together, that was like, oh my god, yes, yes. I don't even need to know what the movie's about. I don't care if it's a sci-fi movie in space. I don't care. D DiCaprio working with Tarantino is like the greatest thing ever. I mean, probably the greatest actor ever working with, possibly the greatest director ever. I mean. I remember seeing this movie. It came out on Christmas Day, twenty twelve. I didn't see. I was away on Christmas. I saw the day after. I was just oh, this movie is. It's a badass movie. Now DiCaprio is not in the movie as much. He's not the main character. Um, Calvin Candy is a fantastic and just a prick. He's a fantastic character, but he's a prick. Like he's a jerk. I mean, the lines, the lines that come out from him are fantastic. Like, the stuff that he says, when you first see him and Jamie Foxx together, like, it's just, oh, it's just so good. And when you first see him in the character, like, he's just sitting on that couch, and he sees all those black men fighting, and he's smoking his pipe, and he has that weird beard of his and that long hair of his. Like, it's just, it's a brilliant, and I mean, the line, adult supervision is required, and when he breaks the glass and that he rubs his blood all over Carrie Washington's face, that's his real blood, and he was snubbed for Best Supporting Actor. I remember everybody was saying that he was going to be nominated for this movie. And I would he have won? I don't think so, because I thought Christoph Waltz was fantastic in the movie, but like... DiCaprio, I mean, how was that not dedicated enough of a performance? Breaking your hand with an actual glass and rubbing your hand, your blood all over this woman's face, real blood. I mean, just the Academy made a dumb decision that you're by snubbing him, snubbing him. Um, Amanda, your thoughts on the hand go unchained? We could do an entire podcast episode of the Academy snubbing DiCaprio. Seriously. Uh, this is just another example of them being ridiculous. That's why there's so, it's such a talked about thing at this point. Like what is the deal with DiCaprio not getting either nominated or winning the Oscar? This is an example of that for sure. He should have been nominated. Absolutely. When I found out he was working with Tarantino, I pretty much did a backflip. And I was, I mean, just so excited to see this. So excited to see this. I adore Tarantino's work. I think he's an amazing director, an amazing writer, one of the best when it comes to dialogue. I was like, what is he going to write for DiCaprio to say? Like, what is this about to be? And then, you know, I found out what the film was about. And I got even more excited because, oh my goodness, Leo is going to play a villain. He's always, you know, he's kind of always the the good guy, like, or the guy that, like, you're rooting for, you're, how often are we watching a film and absolutely detesting the character he's portraying, like, had that even happened yet at that point? I mean, I can't really think of anything. This is, like, this is so opposite of anything he had done. I was so thrilled for him to be able to do something like this, and I love that he talked about how even he was almost completely uncomfortable with portraying this character. That's how disgusting this character is. That's how shitty this person is that he's portraying, and, you know, I mean, no disappointments at all. I thought the film was brilliant. I wasn't even mad, obviously, like that he wasn't the main character. This wasn't really about that for me. It was about seeing him do something that he hadn't done before, and he nailed it. Like he nailed it again. He can be anything, and this is just the perfect example of DiCaprio being 
anything because we always love him in his films, but in this one, we, I mean, I, I can't really imagine loving this character. I love the performance, but the character is one of the worst. And uh, he's amazing. The whole blood thing, like you mentioned, that blew my mind. I got so excited when I found out, you know, like, oh, no, that was his real blood. It's kind of disgusting, but it's like, that's a death. That's how dedicated he is. There was no cut. I'm really bleeding. Someone to stitch up my hand. It's like, no, I'm going to use this to make my performance even more amazing. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy good. Should have been nominated. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean... I mean, what else can you say? I mean, uh, I'm sure when people first saw the trailer, they were like, DiCaprio, a villain? Cool. But, ew. Um, But I remember seeing the movie, and I was shocked, too. Like, I was blown away by DiCaprio's performance. Like, just, oh, my God. Such a fantastic performance. Uh, the next film is The Great Gatsby, Morning Old Sport. Um, The Great Gatsby is a movie that... um. Uh, the, the Great Gatsby is one of those movies that people were very curious about because, you know, it's based on the very popular book. It's been made into films about 25 million times, and, um, it's from Boz Lorman, who directed DiCaprio in Romeo and Juliet, so people were very curious to see how this film was going to turn out. The film, I thought, was okay. I loved the book. Like, I read the book this school year. Because when you're a junior, you generally read The Great Gatsby. And um, I, I saw the movie before I read the book. And I didn't really remember the movie that much. Because I didn't really care for the movie that much. But I loved DiCaprio's portrayal of Gatsby. He portrayed Gatsby so well that it was a fantastic performance. I mean, say what you want about the film itself. You could say the film stinks. But everybody has praised DiCaprio's performance. Even if they hate the living crap out of Great Gatsby, they love his performance. His performance is amazing. But you told me this the other day. There's another thing about this movie that you love to death. Could you please tell the people why you love DiCaprio's performance and the other thing? Oh, yes. I, I can help with all that. Yes, I, I can just, I can go ahead and, and talk about that other thing, if that's what you'd like. Uh, Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Lana Del Rey. It just flows off the tongue so nicely, doesn't it? Her yes. Her name Lana Del Rey. Uh, she is the voice of Great Gatsby when it comes to the soundtrack. Young and Beautiful was written for this film. Uh, Baz Luhrmann approached her and asked if she would create a song for the soundtrack Film, and this is the one you hear repeatedly throughout the film. You actually hear different versions of it as well. They actually play like a sort of 20s um, flapper version of Young and Beautiful in the first party scene um, that he takes Daisy to. I don't know if you remember that. But, yeah, I remember that. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite songs from a film. And it was my favorite song from any film that year. And she was not nominated for the Oscar. Everyone thought she was going to get a nomination. And there was some weird like cons like like there was some sort of conspiracy like someone wrote a letter to the academy saying that she wasn't eligible and then it, it turned out that she was i don't know anyway point is the song is amazing and beautiful and it's one of the best aspects of the great gatsby for sure um if you don't agree with me then let's you know what you're wrong and i'm right okay so the film itself <laughs> The film itself, I enjoy it. Um, the first time I watched it, I feel like I loved it more than I did the second time I watched it. But I didn't dislike it. I just felt like maybe my excitement for the film. Um, and then I love how it's shot. Um, there's some really beautiful, beautiful scenes in this in this movie. Um the story, I have the book, I've read it. I knew what to expect, but at the same time, it's, it upset me more for some reason watching the film. And maybe it was because it was DiCaprio. And, you know, I'm just, at this point, it's just like, how many times do I have to watch DiCaprio, you know, sort of get screwed over so badly? Um, I, I love his his portrayal of Gatsby, though, like you said. 
it's a very tender, beautiful portrayal. And then all of a sudden, there's this explosive scene between him and Joel Egerton. Is that his name? Yeah. That, it, it just sort of rocks the boat. Like, it's, whoa, shell shocks you for a second. And you're just reminded again how DiCaprio can go from point, like, he can go from A to Z in a split second. He's just the best at that sort of thing that sort of erupting on screen just all of a sudden exploding and you're just like whoa yeah he uh he portrayed that really well in that in that moment um but the film i do really like i have it i own it i will watch it again um i don't really have anything bad to say about it uh it's a little over the top sometimes maybe that's baz Luhrmann's style though and i love baz Luhrmann. don't get me wrong he's one of my favorite directors uh but i wouldn't say I mean, I wouldn't even put it in my top and DiCaprio performances. Oh, not performances, but films. I feel like there's a few people that would look at me and go, what? But, yeah. Yeah. We've talked about, how many films have we talked about at this point? Do you know? No, I don't. I lost count. I, I think he's only done I mean, about... we've talked about a lot. Yeah, we talked about a lot of films. The next, the next film and the last film that he's done recently, well, yeah, the last film he's done that's been released, The Wolf of Wall Street, Christmas Day, 2013. Um, what it... I mean, the fifth film with him and Scorsese collaborating together, I mean, like, I... When I first heard about the film that they were going to do together again, I was excited. And then just the cast was announced, like Kyle Chandler and Matthew McConaughey and Jonah Hill. When Jonah Hill was announced to be in this movie, I was shocked as hell. But at the same time, it wasn't because he was so good in Moneyball. Um, DiCaprio, this might be... I mean, I kind of said that his best performance might be The Departed. This might be his best performance because... Here's the thing. Before this movie, DiCaprio has never really done comedy. He, I don't even think he's ever done a comedy film before this. That's Yeah, he's done films with some comedic elements, but he's never done a movie that's considered a comedy. And he was so entertaining in this movie. I mean, the scene when he's on all those quaaludes and he's crawling to the car, he's like, get off the phone! Like, just, <laughs> I mean, oh my god. God, and that showed that he could do any genre. I mean, I'm sure he can't do musicals. If he ever did a musical, I would probably die. I don't even know because um, DiCaprio saying, I don't, I don't know. It would just be a weird feeling. But DiCaprio is amazing in this movie, and this finally got him his fourth and fifth Oscar nomination because he was both nominated for Best Actor and he was nominated as Producer, so he was nominated for Best Picture. So, um, uh, DiCaprio is just, and him working with Jonah Hill, I mean, seeing those two, that felt like the young De Niro and Pesci, Joe Pesci. Like, it was just so cool seeing them together, and I mean, this, like I said, this might be DiCaprio's best performance. I think he should have won the Oscar. No diss to Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club at all. Like, that performance was a incredible and heartbreaking performance. DiCaprio did win the Golden Globe for Best Comedic Actor. Like, just... I, I... This was my favorite movie of 2013. This was my favorite film of 2013. This is, like, I think my third favorite film of this decade behind The Social Network and Whiplash. Like, it's just, like that perfect like how do you feel about this movie overall and his performance and like everything about this movie oh uh, um wolf of wall street dicaprio's performance of his career basically in my opinion i mean it he and okay you mentioning the whole him not doing comedy before this and i mean like you know he had moments in other films where um, there were comedic elements and being lighthearted and, and funny, but this was, this was like the moment he proved that he could do anything. I remember one of my friends mentioned like, okay, I knew he was, he was capable of doing this and capable of doing that and this and that, 
but now he has pretty much proved that he can do anything, and I hate him because I love him so much. <laughs> it was just like, I hate this guy, but I love him so much. He can do anything. I hate him. Like He's so talented. I, I don't understand how one person is just capable of so many different... He's so versatile. This performance is insane at the same time. It's like every possible emotion is displayed and it's displayed in a way is that like it's it's crazy it's insane i think he's hilarious in this film he's also extremely scary in this movie to me he's like i remember my friend saw it before my my roommate saw it before me he came home and i was just like i was pissed because i hadn't seen it yet and i was like don't tell me anything don't tell me anything he's like all i'm going to say is he's insane he's insane i'm like what do you mean he's like he is insane. Amanda, this performance is insane. See it as soon as possible. And then I saw it, and I'm just, like, draw on the ground. Like, you know what? I can't imagine, at this point, anyone ever stealing the title. And that, from him, and that title is Amanda's favorite working actor. And, you know, my favorite actor of all time is Marlon Brando. But DiCaprio is right there with him. I mean... This is the last film we're talking about for this episode, um, correct? I was going to mention the next film that he's working on right now because I want right, to like course, briefly bring up. But um, before for, we for get... films that we've actually seen. Wait, what? For films that, that we have actually seen, Wolf of Wall Street is the last one on the list. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let me just say, let me just say, this was also my favorite film from 2013. I think that Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio are a match made in heaven. I think that this film, while it's not for everyone, I know some people hated it. Um, it's, it doesn't really censor anything if you're really sensitive to um, everything that hard happens. R-rated material. This would be a film for you. But I felt like it needed to be that way to really portray this world that these people are living in. It's one that most people have no clue about to portray it in a way like showing like this is how crazy it gets. There are some people that actually live live their life this way that care this much about this kind of stuff. And I mean, I think that, you know, censoring that would have been a mistake. So I thought that the film was perfect. It's extremely long, but I liked that it was long. I, I thought that it was one of those films that had enough material to, um, to be two hours and 45 minutes or something crazy like no, that. No, it was three um, hours long. Three hours. It was three hours? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, um, again, I think it's the performance of, of his career just at this, at that's like, it's at the top when it comes to just, you know, everything that you can possibly imagine one character portraying in one film, he's portraying it in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, like, I mean, just, like, everything, like, he's, it, he's insane in this movie, like you said, like, I mean, he's scary, he's funny, he's like every possible emotion ever and like and yeah despite the movie being long i mean honestly before i go in it i was a little worried that i was gonna feel the runtime and i didn't feel it honestly the movie felt like an hour and a half to me because i was so into it it was a weird movie for me to experience in the theater like it was a weird experience in the theater i don't even want to get into it but um it, it was a great it's a great movie to watch i have watched that movie so many times ever since it came out and i love it to death it's my favorite um it's my second favorite Scorsese and DiCaprio film after the part, but it's my favorite. It's my favorite DiCaprio performance, in my opinion. So like, I, that's all. So like, let me ask you this: like, I already said my favorite DiCaprio film and my favorite DiCaprio performance. What's your favorite DiCaprio film and favorite DiCaprio performance? Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, my favorite DiCaprio film. I have a tie. I hope that's okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, I think that it's... Okay, it might be a three-way tie. Oh, God, don't kill me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Okay. What's Eating Gilbert Grape? The Departed and um, Romeo and Juliet are probably my three favorite films. And performance-wise, I'm going to have to give it... Two is a tie between What's Eating Gilbert Grape and Wolf of Wall Street. Okay, 
okay, that's totally fine. I mean, the Romeo and Juliet thing. I mean, I get, I get it. Okay, I totally get it. I mean, I don't love the movie, but I totally get it. I'm mainly, I'm mainly apologizing because it's so difficult for me to choose between the films. And honestly, Revolutionary Road is like right there with all of the ones I just mentioned. Yeah, like I mean, like for me, like it's so hard to be, pick my favorite film. Like it's like it's between Catch Me If You Can and The Party. Like it's between those two particular movies. Like it's like those are my two favorite directors, and they're working with my favorite actor working today. Like it's just oh god, it's like insane. So like now yeah. he's so now he's, I, I I feel you. I feel you. I, I can really accept it. Yeah, I I agree with you. So like that now he's currently working on a film called The Revenant, directed by recent Best Director winner Alejandro G. Inriaritu, who directed Birdman, which was this year's Best Picture winner. Um, This film sounds great. I mean, like, the stuff that... You you look at an image, and you're like, this guy... I hope that this is the film that finally gets him his Oscar win. Because when you're working with the most recent Best Director winner who directed the recent Best Picture winner, like, this could easily get him his Oscar. I do think he's going to get nominated. I mean, I haven't seen the movie. The movie doesn't come out till the end of the year. So, I mean, like, it's with him, Tom Hardy, Don Hall Gleason, Will Poulter from We're the Millers, which is weird because he was in We're the Millers. So, I mean, like, oh, my God. Um, This movie's going to be great. It's going to be... A, it's one of my most anticipated films of this year. And just... DiCaprio is going to be brilliant, and working with Alejandro, I mean, he's got so many directors he needs to work with. Richard Linklater, uh, Steven Soderbergh, Wes Anderson, Ron Howard, David Fincher. There's so many filmmakers that this guy has to work with. He's worked with almost every great filmmaker ever. Like, I'm really excited for this movie. How do you feel about The Revenant? Oh, so excited. What can I say? Like, that's, I feel like that's the word of the night. So excited. Um, excitement when it comes to DiCaprio doing anything, like, I get, I mean, I follow it, and I, when I found out what it's about, and the type of, you know, characters that he will be portraying, I'm like, okay, this smells like Oscar bait to me, and I mean, like, every year that he does anything, it's, it's usually Oscar bait to some extent, but, you know, we've all been talking, when I say we, like, the internet, the, the media, the world has been talking about when will DiCaprio get an Oscar? And honestly, I know I realize it's not probably not that important to him, and he's already talked about you know awards aren't you know the most important thing, and you know, the films themselves are what's you know so important to him. He just wants to be remembered for doing great work, and I mean at this point he's already solidified that he's done great work, so he doesn't have to ever worry about that. Um, he will always be remembered for how amazing he is, and uh, you know that being said. Um, even though he's not too focused on winning an Oscar, he's going to get it. It's a matter of when and how, like how many hoops does he have to jump through to get that Oscar? I think that, I mean, I feel very strongly that that this could be, this could, this could be it. Um, When I found out they were filming this, I tried desperately to get an audition for this film because I mean Tom Hardy and DiCaprio are working together so that's exciting and uh they were looking for some Native American characters and me being um Native American I thought maybe I'd have a chance at this my agent did contact the casting director and submitted me for it but I never heard back but it's cool that they at least you know tried to get me in so when I see this, I will be probably looking at all the Native American characters going, why isn't that me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think this movie is going to be awesome. I, I couldn't be more pumped. I'm sure it's going to be my top ten of the year because Birdman was my number two of 2014. Like, it was right there behind Whiplash. Like, I just love Birdman to death. And, I mean, we're going to – this is just brief. Michael Keane hosted SNL uh, on Saturday night. Um, <laughs> the open monologue he does is so... F- oh, my God. Unfortunately, the monologue wasn't great, but when he said, I'm Batman, and he quoted Beetlejuice, holy fuck, I was, I was... I kind of squealed because I'm like, this should have been the Oscar winner. Anyway, that's a little minor rant, but, um... <laughs> but, um... 
Yeah, uh, DiCaprio, we could say, is one of the best actors working today, if not the best actor working today. There were so many actors and directors that he has yet to work with in his future career, so I'm really hoping that he's going to get that Oscar soon. The Revenant could be it. If not, he will definitely get it in the future. I am very confident that he will get his first Oscar win in the future. So in the future, at some point before cars start flying and we're all living on the moon, we're all living on the moon. We all have hoverboards and cars are flying. Um, <laughs> and DiCaprio won the Oscar. I, sw- in space. I, I swear to God, if they ever make a movie about DiCaprio and that guy wins the Oscar for playing DiCaprio and DiCaprio does not win an Oscar, I will probably cry. I might even be dead by the time that happens, but still, like, I mean, that might happen in 65 years, but, um, who knows? Um, you know what? I'm just gonna say I'm very, very confident that he will actually, he will win soon. Like, if I had to place some sort of bet on that, I feel like he's gonna win it very soon. Um, yeah, I think I think it's in the near future before the cars start flying. I really do. I I agree. I think he's going to win. So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our very first episode of the Films of podcast. Now, we already planned our next episode. So, Amanda, would you be kind to tell the people what our next episode will be on? Are you going to say you- I, I, I this is I'm sorry. This is this is um me trying to remember what our next episode is gonna be on. Oh boy. I hope everyone is I hope everyone's laughing and not getting super annoyed with my, my oh dramatic pausing. Alright, I'm Our I'm, next I'm, episode of the films of will be the films of I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm texting you right now what it is. What, what, oh you know what? I had it right the whole time and I was I should have been more confident. Guys, I knew it was this. I knew it was Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is everybody. Tom Hanks is our Tom next Hanks. episode. Tom yay. Hanks. Yay, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. This is going to be so great. And we might have a guest. Now like we're not going to have Tom Hanks on here, but it would be great to have him on here because he's <laughs> he's he's Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. I, ma, this is going to be a great episode. So guys, we would seriously like to thank you for tuning into the very first episode of the Film Sub Podcast. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, MySpace, wherever you want to share it. I don't care where you share it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Amanda, please tell the lovely people here where they can find you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Amanda Actress. You can also find me on YouTube under Amanda Dunn and Twitter under the same Instagram handle, which is Amanda Actress. And you can find me at Twitter and Instagram at Brian Suds98. That's B R Y A N S U D Z 98. You can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Brian Sudfield. And you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Brian Sudfield Movies. Guys, we seriously would love to thank you so much for tuning into this very first episode. We really appreciate the support from anybody who tunes into this episode. Please just, like I said, share the video, comment on it, give your thoughts on it, tell us your favorite DiCaprio films, tell us your favorite moments, your performances, all that stuff, all that jazz, and all that jazz. Seriously, (laughs) like, ah, my God, this was a fun time. Amanda, thank you so much for being my lovely co-host. And don't worry, guys. She will be back. She'll be back. She's our. She's the official I co-host. I absolutely be back. I I had so much fun, and I can only hope that you guys had at least half as much fun as I did. Same here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys next week with the Film Self Podcast, where our episode will be on Tom Hanks. Take care, Tom guys. Hanks. Take care, guys. Love you, bye!